Hello everyone, welcome back to New Horizons. Where we have been rapidly increasing our technology levels, we got a few more HV machines. We also successfully operated our clean room, crafted up the first of the EV circuits, the workstations. That allowed us to invest in a vacuum freezer and then get a double set of nichrome coils for the blast furnace. One of them running at HV and the other one running at EV. And finally, we also gave plastics a little reshuffle so that along with polyethylene, we're also producing polyvinyl chloride. I nearly said polytetrafluoroethylene there, but no, not yet. However, the inputs for this, which is oil, is not exactly easily obtainable for us at this point in the game. We're still using the LV pump, which we crafted, I don't know how many episodes back. And I find that we're constantly flying out here to this remote pump. By now though, there is another way to do this. The tier one multi-block fluid drilling rig. So for this, we're gonna need an MV machine hull, four MV circuits, four MV pumps, four MV motors, which we should have. We also need cobalt, which I did previously smelt through the blast furnace. It's in one of these chests. There we go. This has to be turned into gears. I believe we need four. As part of the multi-block structure, we also need some frame boxes and solid steel machine casings. And Blue Peter style, here is some I made earlier. We need a maintenance hatch, which I believe we should have batch crafted also. An output hatch for the oil. The input bus for mining pipe. An energy hatch, at least MV, which we stole from the clean room last episode. And it makes sense that we have somewhere to store the fluid on site, since of course we don't have access to ender tanks at the moment. So for that we're going to go with the super tank. The cobalt gears are finished crafting, and now we just have to put it all together, which we should be able to do in any assembling machine, along with some solar and alloy, which I believe is stored in one of these circuit assemblers. Okay, circuit number two, load up the assembling machine. And a short time later, we have our first multi-block drilling rig. Okay, so now there's one more thing we have to do before we can set up this multi-block. First of all, we are going to have to replace the prospector scanner, which I broke in the Twilight Forest. And unlike the... Unlike the single block pumps, which actually mine physical oil which spawns in the world, the multi-block versions actually mine oil underneath bedrock, but not every chunk contains oil or the same type of oil. I believe there is raw oil, regular oil, light oil, and heavy oil. There might be one I'm missing there. Okay, this could either be very fruitful or a waste. <laughs> we're currently right underneath our base. And if we're able to find oil right here, it's gonna make it super easy to transport automatically. I would be surprised if this actually works, so I'm not betting on it, but let's see. Okay, we found one new oil field. Aha, looks like we found heavy oil. Yeah, and you can see here that it's actually among quite a few chunks. It's split into regions, I guess. And then every chunk within this has varying amounts of heavy oil. So you generally want to pick the one which has the most. However, since we're after naphtha, which we're distilling into ethylene, it looks like the one which gives us the most naphtha when we distill is actually raw oil. Heavy oil gives 15 liters, whereas raw oil gives 75. And regular oil even less, actually. So I'm gonna keep going until we find some raw oil. We are right on the edge of the region though, so theoretically we should be able to scan these three chunks. There should be something different in each one. Okay, regular oil, <laughs> and quite a lot of it, look at this. Hundreds of liters in each chunk. Next chunk is raw oil, but only one liter. That's awful, <laughs> that is terrible. Okay, one chunk left, let's see what we get. Nothing? Yeah, we found nothing. Occasionally there isn't any, any oil in a region. It looks like we're gonna have to go further afield then. Well, I certainly didn't expect to have to dig this much, but um, I went in every direction. And natural gas is the other one we can find here in the overworld. We are gonna go with this one here, heavy oil. There appears to be 94 liters in this chunk, which isn't amazing, but we have a tunnel straight here from our base. So if I remember this correctly, it's three by three by seven. Controller block up front, energy hatch on the back. Actually, these hatches and ports can be really anywhere. And then let's say we do output hatch on the right hand side, input boss on the left. The rest of the bottom layer is solid steel machine casings. And then I think it goes up by three. Anyway, surrounding this casing is more of these frame boxes. And then it goes up by another three on top, I think, to cap it off. Yeah, something like that should form the multi-block. Perfect. Let's do maintenance. I did remember to bring the toolbox. I always carry this with me. <laughs> what I didn't remember though was a generator. Of course, I didn't bring the generator, so there's no way to power this thing. Aha, we are drilling. So I went back and crafted the MV generator. We got a buffer for benzene and an MV gas turbine. 
Since we're one block above bedrock, it only needs a single mining pipe. I do always keep spare in the backpacks, but I didn't think about that before. It's kind of a nice benefit to putting it all the way down here, although not necessary. We could technically put it all the way to the surface. On the output here, we have a super tank to hold the heavy oil. However, the drilling rig is not very smart. And let's say this super tank fills up and the output hatch then fills up. This thing is going to keep drilling fluid. However, the output will be voided. So to prevent that and smarten up the machine, we can use a machine controller on the right hand side and what's called a fluid detector cover, which gives out a fluid amount as redstone. You can think about it like a comparator almost. And that's going to face the machine controller. We're going to set this to 10 buckets, which should be 10,000 liters. And we'll also invert. And then on the machine controller, we want safe mode, enable with redstone. So by default, if this thing has less than 10 buckets, it's going to emit a redstone signal and turn the machine on. And if it fills up, it's going to turn off the redstone signal and turn off the machine. And that is the standard we'll set for every single multi-block we build moving forward. I think that type of consistency is going to help us out later down the line. So as a rule from now on, if redstone is on, machine is on. Oh yeah, and finally, of course, we do want to set a waypoint. And we can also fill in the miner log. So overworld and raw oil. So we have been doing a lot of gregging, as you guys seem to say now. <laughs> I noticed more and more that's being used as a verb, which I find a little bit strange, but we can roll with it. I guess we can now greg. And of course we have a lot more greg left to do in this series, especially if we want to reach our goal of the tier 7 rocket. However, I find it's very easy to stick to your comfort zone, and for me that is gregging, since that's what I know the most of. And sticking within your comfort zone doesn't necessarily just apply to modded Minecraft either. It's easy to do what you know, but sometimes the most fruitful endeavours lie in the unknown. And for me, that is Thomcraft. So I thought we could develop this room, I like the idea and concept that we have going. It's just that I think it's easier if we do form to follow function and not try to retrofit some mechanics which we don't yet understand into a room which we've already built. So join me as we continue our adventures through the wizarding world of Thomcraft. So to get anywhere in Thomcraft, we're going to have to do a lot of crafting, right? And all of the crafting within Thomcraft requires us to have a wand filled with V. Right now we have the satin entwined great wood wand which is pretty decent, capacity of 50 and 95% average V cost, so we get a 5% discount. The problem is having to recharge with the primal shrooms isn't exactly ideal, and we only get a tiny amount every time we break this thing. Fortunately though, there is, as I understand it, an automated way to do this, not using the primal shrooms. All of these advanced technologies though require higher V capacity than our wand can currently sustain, which means we need a new wand, right? But the next year of wand we want to make we can't actually craft with the wand we have, which means that we have to improve the discount that we have with our thaumaturge set. Currently we have a discount of 5%, 2%, 2% and 1% in the boots. We can improve that with the upgraded robes. And to make these apparently we need the spinning table. <laughs> so basically we need better robes to craft the wand, to craft better equipment to improve our wand. Oh thaumcraft. <laughs> okay let's do this. And apparently we have to use seed oil for this thing. Seed oil and a chemical bath with sticks, a wooden gear, and a long stick. I think that's everything. Uh, yeah, there is the spinning table. So the bewitched robes are a direct upgrade from our existing thaumaturge set, but we need at least six pieces of bewitched fleece. You know what, something we haven't done in a while is clear the pin screen. Let's start with a blank canvas here. Okay, so bewitched fleece, we need thaumium thread, yarn, and golden thread. All made in the spinning wheel which we just made. I think I said spinning table, but I meant spinning wheel. And all of this requires string. Oh hey, look at that, we have some spare lich bones. I didn't realize we had those last episode. <laughs> all right, so I don't remember if we need a redstone signal or anything for this thing to function. It should just be a matter of putting in the inputs and this should be yarn. Perfect, just works on its own. I wish there was an animation to this though. It's a bit of a strange texture, you can definitely tell it's from the old era of Minecraft mods. Oh boy, I can tell I'm going to be doing a lot of running back and forwards today. Quick recharge of the wand and combine the three threads together gives us the bewitched fleece. Oh, it wasn't quite enough, we have to charge it twice. <laughs> and then probably once more to upgrade the armour. So the robes and the leggings. And the quest. Oh yeah, now we're looking like a real wizard. I say that every time, but man, the gear in Thumbcraft looks awesome, right? 
Anyways, the next thing we want to craft isn't actually going to be a wand. We're going to make a scepter. And from what I understand, the difference between the wand and scepter is the scepter, I think it's this we want, right? Silverwood wand core. The scepter has higher V capacity and greater discount, but the scepter can't cast any spells. I'm not sure we're doing the right research here. Aha, I think we might be on the right track. Crafting scepters seems to be what we need. Oh yeah, and just in case you were curious to get the bewitched robes, you need research in witching gadgets. Enchanted fabric, you need the spinning wheel, and then bewitched fleeces right here. Let's pick up this scepter research that should unlock the wand we want. Scepter we want. I have a really bad habit of going around the outside, but actually it's more efficient to go through the middle. Okay, this should be the research. Awesome. 780 different recipes for scepters. Oh no, some of these are actually staves as well. But yeah, there's a lot of different stuff we can craft here. Some of this stuff sounds awesome, right? I mean, look at this. Shadow metal attuned wooden scepter. Even just the name of that oozes magic. What we want to craft though is the gold banded great wood scepter. And I think the only thing we don't have out of this is a primal charm. It seems we've unlocked the recipe, it's just going to be some clusters. A lot of crap. This is expensive. Wow. 50 of each aspect. Yeah, this is, this is going to take me a minute. Oh yeah, and throughout this whole episode, we are still going to be gregging. <laughs> keeping all the machines full. Trying to process as many resources as we can. The blast furnace has stopped and I realised we were actually out of benzene. Fortunately, our setup over there has a full super tank, which we can swap out. Now, we do need to drink milk after handling the super tank. It's the super tank, by the way, that gives us all the debuffs. But yeah, pretty soon here, we have to upgrade our benzene system. That might be a project for next episode, we'll see. Before I started Thumbcraft today, I moved the miner onto a tin vein. And I also know that a lot of you guys play along. Even if you don't though, we're going to move one of the miners, the other miner, onto a cryolite vein in the twilight forest. Cryolite is something that we used for aluminium but we're soon going to need it for a different purpose. So not something we need today, but we're investing in the future here and we're planning ahead. After a significant amount of crafting though, we can pick up the Primal Charm. So there's two chapters in Thomcraft, Novice and Adept Thaumaturgy. We have come to the end of the Novice, although we are going to pick up a lot of this stuff later on. It's just a checkbox. This should have unlocked Adept. Apparently we have mastered the basics. I don't know about that, but <laughs> it's time to move on here. So the next one is creating a better wand. We've technically already done this. That unlocks the quest for the Primal Charm, which we have now crafted. There's the quest. Oh sweet, it gives us four mixed crystal clusters. Oh here is what I remember, after holding a Primal Charm for a while you suddenly understand some of its whispers. It's the reason I made enough material for two, although we do have to recharge the wand. Okay, the second Primal Charm. So now comes the moment of truth, can we craft our new scepter? Okay, apparently not with shift click, let's do this manually. Great wood rod, two stainless steel screws. Is it going to let us craft it? Yes, perfect. The gold banded great wood scepter. Oh, look at all those research points. That's awesome. Oh, and the quest. Aha, and the primal charm apparently just taught us something. We've discovered a clue to a new research. Wait, did we unlock something else in the Thomonomicon? I'm really not sure what that was there. The quest here does actually give us an extra primal charm though. Okay, so we're now at the point where we can explore some new mechanics and dive into the unknown. That was shaken a bit too violently for my liking there. <laughs> I thought something had gone wrong, but no, we're going to invest in something nice to have. Our very first helmet lens. The lens here we can actually equip to our goggles of revealing with the use of a keybind and it's going to give us permanent night vision. It's not something we'll use all the time, I like the atmosphere of not having any night vision. But this will allow us to see the glaring mistake that I made at the beginning of the episode. <laughs> I've already filled this up with oil actually a while ago. It looks like it's just getting on the last amount of heavy oil. And you might remember where I said it looks like the one which gives us the most naphtha when we distill is actually a raw oil. Heavy oil gives 15 litres, whereas raw oil gives 75. And despite that, like, a few minutes later, I still pumped heavy oil. <laughs> it was late, okay? It does mean we need to find raw oil, but uh, I'm going to do that before we actually move on. Yeah, I don't know what I was thinking. I guess I must have confused heavy and raw oil. But the quest book here also gave us this lens case, which can be used for all the different lenses. And there is multiple different lenses, which all give different effects. 
pretty awesome. We might invest in some more in the future. But for now, let me fix this and let us stop wasting benzene. Wait, did it use it all? <laughs> okay, yeah, this was a giant waste of benzene for heavy oil. Let me find somewhere more appropriate for this thing. So with the drill placed in a much more appropriate location, we've run into a bit of an unexpected situation. So our alternative to using primal shrooms is actually to go back to using aura nodes and charging the wand this way, but running around a whole bunch between crafts isn't exactly ideal or convenient, and arguably is worse than the low drop chance of the primal shroom. However, there is actually a mechanic in Thomcraft which allows us to put the node inside a jar and transport that back to the base. After we do that, we can bring it back here to stabilize it and then grow it into some sort of mega node. <laughs> now that sounds like fun, and I really want to figure out how that works. However, the initial spell to jar the node does have a very good chance of actually damaging it, so I don't think it's very wise to do the novice version of node jarring. We might as well go advanced, right? So to begin, we have to start off with some research. The first one is node in a jar in the basic tab. Then over to Artifice to pick up Warded Arcana. Then into Thaumaturgy for the one focus of excavation. That in turn leads into the one focus of warding. A mechanic will need to actually jar the nodes. And then finally we can head into Automagy and collect the advanced node jarring research. Alright, so now we can get into some exploration and start jarring up some of these nodes, right? And actually that extra lens you saw me craft is the Scholar's Lens, which can allow us to scan things without holding the thermometer. So we can scan auto nodes just by looking at them. Oh, one more in the distance. Oh, this one is nice. That has a few aspects on it. So the advanced node jarring research states that the node will be immediately jarred safe and sound. Perfect. However, as it turns out, we're not quite finished here. This is GTNH after all, <laughs> and I don't know how many times I can keep saying this, but genuinely I, I actually did think we were done here and that we could start to jar some nodes. But here's the thing, let me lay it out for you guys. So the spell to actually jar the node costs 125 V, and the scepter we just crafted is only 75 V. And not only that, I learned moments ago that actually this warding focus that we have to use to jar the node, which is a separate spell, actually takes a nether star lens, and of course it does, right? <laughs> yeah, so the wither is infernal in this, I believe, so we don't want to fight that guy without taking proper precautions. And then of course the other issue is the next year of wand. Stick with me here guys, I need you here on the grind with me. Oh, that looks funny with the goggles. So yeah, I'm not up for dying and losing all the levels to the wither today. So let's start with the next year of wand. And this time it's going to be the gold banded transmutative scepter, 105 V to craft, which means we need some extra discount. And to get the extra discount, we have to craft some more circuits. So I started by crafting up eight more HV circuits, and that we combined together with the eight we already had crafted at the beginning of last episode. Some of those HV circuits were turned into EV circuits. We need a total of four. Then we use the HV circuits to make sensor lenses. We use some more HV circuits to make heat exchangers. We need four of these and then upgrade the heat exchangers two at a time into advanced heat exchangers. And somehow today we find ourselves making more night vision. I thought that was a quest. Oh yeah, we definitely want to pick up the quest for this. So it turns out we need to craft the nano boots of the traveler, which gives V discount of four, and also the nano goggles of revealing, which gives a discount of 6% up from 5%. So we're working with razor thin margins, but every single percentage point counts. And I mean, if we're going to craft this nano suit, we might as well go for the full set. It's going to help us fight the wither soon. I do want to make sure this quest is unlocked because eventually it gives us three HV enchanted loot bags. There is actually a search for uh, quests, which is really nice. Okay, it wants us to make an a basic autoclave. Okay, we can do that. And we are going to immediately disassemble this thing because we have one HV. And I already have the carbon plates made up, but we need to do it again for the quest. Okay, so while those are crafting, for every single piece of armor, we also need a nano crystal. And this comes from the energy crystal, which is an alternate battery actually for HV tier. This is made up of energium dust, which is ruby and redstone dust in a mixer. 
and also Molten Energetic Alloy in an HV Autoclave. It looks like we might not have enough Energetic Alloy. I was actually cooking up some more in the Blast Furnace. It's in one of these, yes. And you know what, if we look on the positive side, there's always a positive side. <laughs> you have to embrace the rabbit hole. This is actually going to knock out a fair few quests in the HV chapter. Actually, in all of the chapters, they're spread amongst all of the tech progression. The energy crystals from the autoclave have to go through an HV precision laser engraver. We have one of those, right? This is HV. Haha, <laughs> we are laser engraving. We are, however, one machine short. I know for a fact we don't have an MV forming press, right? The one we have is only LV, this one. So yeah, we do need to make an MV forming press. And now that all the carbon has finished, it should be finished. This should actually be two quests. There we go. We can start to piece together this armor. So I made a bunch of these molds. <laughs> Look at this. That has to be steel and the casting form through the solidifier. This is so many steps. It's, it's honestly crazy. If you guys have played this pack, then you know. But I don't need to keep reiterating at this point how difficult GTNH is. <laughs> and I totally understand why it's not for everyone. Things like this would, would put a lot of people off. But not me. Okay, so there's the boots, the chest piece, and a request. Now we need some molten redstone alloy. The laser engraver should be finished by now. Assuming nothing voided. Another quest. And now we should just be able to put everything together. Redstone alloy, night vision goggles, a nano crystal, a stack of fine energetic alloy wire, and the carbon plate helmet. Oh, circuit one. Yeah, this is a very expensive set of armor, but we can actually upgrade it to the quantum set later on. And in fact, we can even add a jetpack to the chest piece. So it's actually a very worthwhile investment. So this takes us out of one hole and puts us straight into another. But we got our full nano suit here. Three enchanted HV bags. Uh, could be better. Two diodes. What is that? Glowstone torches is nice though since regular torches don't work with the zero atmosphere environment of space. <laughs> All right, what do you think? I, honestly, I think I prefer the Thomcraft stuff. As cool as this armor, oh my goodness, this is, this is actually cool, I will admit. This is pretty awesome. You know, the amount of comments last episode was somewhat surprising. Overwhelmingly, you guys wanted to see the longer form content though. And that I can certainly deliver on. If you guys are up for joining me in the grind, we can certainly make it through this pack together. Such as the fact that we need both the electric boots of the Traveler and the nano boots of the Traveler. You might notice here that we also have to take on a bit more warp, both for the goggles and for the boots. And of course, two more large researchers to unlock. This should be one. There we go. Oh, more permanent warp. That, that noise kind of scares me a little. We're going to start feeling the effects of warp pretty soon here. All right, so with those both unlocked, we should now have the recipes to... Oh, no. This is going to be a double infusion. First, we need the electric boots of the Traveler, which means we need a spare set of boots of the Traveler. And then all of this malarkey here, plus static boots. Okay, that's easy. And then, of course, all of the Essentia. How bad out of curiosity is the helmet? Uh-oh. Eight HV circuits. Plus two sensors, so that's 10 HV circuits. 10 HV circuits just for this, okay. Plus the electric ones, which means we need spare goggles. That's another two LVs and some repeaters. Yeah, look at this. This is similar to the timer that we have on the smeltery. Look at this. This is just crazy. Plus an R RE battery. <laughs> yeah, so about that long form content. How about we just end the episode here, right? Oh, no, we don't. We are not stopping until we get this. And the scepter as well, should we skip the scepter? <laughs> I mean, if we're going all this way, we need transmutative rod as well, look at this. I guess we better get down to it then, right? Off to a good start here, we have the electric boots of the Traveler. Alright, I believe we should have the resources for electric goggles. I really hope this works with some durability damage on there. Oh no. 
Oh, no, it doesn't work. We need a new set of goggles, I think. Okay, about 20 minutes later, we should have the materials for a new set of goggles. There we go. Now is it going to let us piece it together? Oh, nice. Nice. Just insufficient V. Okay, we can deal with that. No problem. And there it is. The goggles I cannot pronounce. Electro goggles. Yeah, that's 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 easier than goggles of revealing. So the final two steps, nano suit goggles and nano suit boots of the traveler. Super quick tip for all of you guys doing infusion. A good source of tutamin, the armor aspect, is actually red granite dust. And you can get red granite just by pulverizing red granite. This stuff. Here we go, the most unstable infusion we've done today. This should be Boots of the Traveler. Nano Boots of the Traveler. Oh yeah. Okay, one down, one to go. The most expensive one to go. <laughs> Look what just came up in chat. I was just about to say it. When I started crafting all this Thalmcraft stuff, we were at 300 and something hours. 374 hours. And we're now clocking in at 377 hours. So that's four hours just to craft some gear <laughs> for Thumbcraft. And I think I've already spent like 20 hours on this episode before that. Maybe more. Maybe more than that. I'm not sure. But this is definitely a marathon and not a sprint. Speaking of marathon, we need some more circuits. And meanwhile, I want to just show you the power, the true power of nano suit boots of the Traveler. And I did make an extra pair because these things are blazing fast, especially on concrete. Watch this, when we charge them, I think most of the time we're going to be wearing these ones. Okay, let's grab some circuits again. I was making up some more circuit boards. Always a stack at a time. Okay, so this is regular walking speed on concrete. <laughs> this, is, this is honestly crazy. This is so much run speed, like unnecessary amounts of run speed. Look at this. I think we're, yeah, we're going to be wearing these most of the time. This is too fast. This is more reasonable. And I think these, I, oh yeah, these give you extra jump boost. That's way too high. Like, these are just not even practical. <laughs> okay, that's enough fun back to crafting. We have these goggles to make. Upon your thaumaturgic researches, there's always been one aspect that is extremely annoying to get. Aurum. Yeah, so we are in the nether here looking for Aurum. We have all the rest of the materials we need for the goggles in our backpacks. And the final thing we need to put this together is this aspect here, Aurum. We came across this wisp spawner, although it seems that this isn't actually going to help us in this specific situation. There's a pretty decent aura node here though, Sinister Bright node. Actually, truthfully, I have no idea if this is good or not. <laughs> it's something I was hoping I would figure out today, but... It appears these specific wisps only drop the Ignis or Infernus essence. So yeah, this might come in handy later on, but not today, I don't think. We have to find a different solution. Hey! Oh, that was a ghast. <laughs> I was about to say there's actually a chest down here. I don't think it has anything decent though. No. So the second way apparently we can get this is via Aurelia. The Aurelia plant we needed for primal shrooms. We do need a tiny amount of Aurum to actually craft this thing. However, these petals are extremely rich in Aurum Essentia. And we could in theory set up an Aurelia farm. The only thing is we need pink tulips to actually craft these things. And I've been searching for pink tulips for a while, and believe me, there is none around this, around nearby our base, so we would have to go much further afield. However, apparent- oh nice! It's already grown. Aha, uh -huh. so what we're looking at here is actually Terrawart, and we only got one, of course. Terrawart has eight Aurum each. Oh nice, that's way more than I thought. Okay, okay, we're gonna use this then. So this we are growing in IC2 crop sticks. Crop sticks are very, very- complicated, I would say, in this pack. There's a lot of hidden stats. So normally you have to actually crossbreed for these things, right? But actually if you plant nether wart and you have snow blocks underneath, then it should mature into terra wart. This took like 30 minutes to grow and I think, yeah, we need 8 for the goggles of revealing and then another 30 or 24, yeah, it's 24 for the transmutative rod. So it's going to take a second for these things to mature. 
<laughs> yeah, I'm quite glad that actually worked there. We can take down this little experiment. So as it turns out, we have to add some more pedestals to fit some more items for the craft. And it's telling us that we're now missing stability. I don't think enough to cause any issues, but uh, it's something worth noting. Let's not delay this any further, let's grab our goggles of revealing. <laughs> okay, the thing started, that is good. Oh, actually he's pulling from jars over there, I did not expect to see that. Interesting, I wonder if it takes from the furthest first? That's something I, I have yet to understand about this thing. Although apparently, I hear we're actually getting a new infusion altar in, in GTNH specifically. I think the devs are working on an, a super, super ultra fast automatable version, which will be awesome. I can't wait to get my hands on that eventually. Okay, we're almost done. It's pulling in the items. Say goodbye to our nano suit helmet. <laughs> if this goes wrong now, then, uh, then we lose it. Okay, last item, electrum wire. Here we go. Nano suit goggles are revealing. Oh nice, and we oh yes. This is this is a look. Aha, we can even use our lenses. And because they are the IC2 goggles and we crafted that night vision component, I think there's also a keybind to introduce that as well. Just in case you guys were curious, you have to hold the alt key for IC2 and also the mode switch key together. Yeah, that gives us a separate toggle for night vision, so we actually don't even need the lens. Anyways, last thing to craft, we should have enough discount for this wand. Please drop. <laughs> it didn't drop. Oh, it didn't drop. All right, here we go. This should be the transmutative rod. Last infusion craft of the day. Seems to be perfectly okay, although this is a pretty unstable craft. This one actually is eight instability, even higher than the goggles of revealing. But we have a setup which should be able to handle this, no problem. Just takes some time. Oh, and it's taken from that jar again. There it is, transmutative rod. And the quest, let's make sure we scan it. So now we have a discount of 6%, 5%, 4%, and 4%. Necessary to craft. Oh, I forgot shift click doesn't work here. Necessary to craft. Oh, insufficient fee. <laughs> I've been assured this is gonna work. And once again, I want to give a lot of credit to Shadow of X or Metis, the primary author of the spreadsheet that's linked in all of the episode descriptions. He has kept me right this whole episode, and I couldn't have done it without him, honestly. Okay, we got the full wand. Is it going to let us craft? Uh oh. We're supposed to be using gold banded Greatwood Scepter. This is better than satin entwined. At least I'm hoping that's what it is anyway. Yeah, that's exactly what it was. Okay, gold banded transmutative scepter. And this thing should hopefully allow us to do advanced node jarring. Oh yeah, and a little bit of an update on the playtime. 381. So yeah, I might have played a little bit of New Horizons this episode, but if you guys are also playing this pack, try not to be discouraged how long everything takes. It's definitely not as quick as it appears in the videos. Trust me, this takes forever to do anything. <laughs> However, we are going to wrap up this episode right here. I think next time we're going to work on benzene. Yes, that's right, more gregging. <laughs> There's plenty more of that to do here. Thank you guys all so much for watching, and I hope to see you in the next episode of Greg Tech New Horizons.